to come and spend some time in Adelaide and network and meet the participants and each other as well, which is done in the SSB program and is very successful. And Kavindi will talk about that soon. Juan Dadalmo uh, is aware of this and he's uh, happy that it's going on. He couldn't give a live feed, so the president of ISU instead has uh, kindly given a video recording. Hello and uh, greetings to all of you in uh, warm Adelaide uh, from somewhat uh, cooler uh, Vienna and Austria where the United Nations is having uh, this week its annual uh, meeting of the Committee on Peaceful Uses of uh, Outer Space. You know that both the United Nations and ISU uh, share uh, many values of international collaboration and uh, sustainable development in using space. I look forward to being with you in Adelaide maybe in one year's time for an even bigger uh, alumni uh, reunion and a professional alumni conference. We would like to uh, work with our partners in Adelaide to have uh, a yearly uh, professional meeting of uh, ISU alumni from all over uh, Asia and Australia. In the meantime, I would uh, encourage you to uh, have uh, good discussions on how this event could be uh, best uh, prepared and also to uh, stay uh, tuned with the uh, community of uh, ISU alumni. Um, make sure that uh, you are connected through the social media, that uh, you look up the uh, calendar of events. Uh, we are trying to uh, help uh, alumni groups in different cities around the world and um, you might see very soon a new uh, website that we call ISU uh, Space Cafe uh, where you can uh, announce your events and uh, organize uh, professional meetings so that our family stays uh, connected and that we can benefit in our professional uh, life from the informal but very strong uh, network of uh, the ISU community. I wish you productive discussions and see you all very soon. Good, okay. Uh, um, I've met most of you here, but some of you I haven't, so I apologise if I haven't yet introduced myself. I'm Scott Schneider, and I was a participant in the SHSSB 17, and when I was a participant, guess who was my leading TA? <laughs> Definitely. And I thought it might be worth um, giving a bit of background to my experience with ISU and what ISU has opened for me in the way of um, futures and opportunities and uh, the benefit that I got from being involved and maintaining an involvement in the network. So I'm a solicitor and I had an interest in space for many years but knew uh, not very much about it at all, uh, apart from some, what was in the media and some popular science books. And I was practicing criminal law in remote Queensland for a couple of years and uh, was interested to learn more about space, uh, particularly the legal aspects and regulatory aspects, and didn't have the foggiest clue what, what they were about. And this was the really only forum that I found that could offer the jumpstart or a, an overall perspective into what the industry contains, uh, rather than having to do a master's in law with focusing on just a particular unit or two that is um, specific to space. So I was fortunate enough to uh, attend the SHSSB 17, and uh, then we, we had a white paper project, they weren't called team projects, and they were called white papers, and I gained a huge amount of uh, professional experience just from that alone uh, and so I really hope and I saw the quality of the presentations I'm looking forward to reading the papers but they were excellent so <laughs> I'm hoping that you found them as found the process as beneficial as I did uh, from my quite otherwise naive background in those kinds of projects uh, after I graduated the program I spent a lot of time uh, traveling trying to think about where my next step would be and I came back as a teaching associate to this program last year and was then a colleague of Alex's. And several people here were participants in that program. 
And we're on to three, four, five at least. And from there, I was fortunate to maintain an involvement with the university again and go to the SSB program in the Netherlands, uh, which uh, was a very eye-opening experience because then you really do get to see the extent of the ISU network. It's a huge, huge program and it draws on a lot of, lot of experiences and uh, materials from a lot of experts over a lot of fields. So, I've come back from that. I've now relocated to Adelaide, uh, working at a law firm, uh, which is looking to, as some other law firms are in Adelaide, to find out how it can contribute in the space sector uh, from a commercial perspective and where it can help uh, small and medium enterprises uh, across the advanced technologies sector. And so I'm very excited to finally be in Adelaide, especially after the announcement of some pretty uh, um, some fantastic news with the agency and other government initiatives that are happening. And I should say, uh, point out that we're very fortunate to have Michael Davis in the room today, who uh, was part of a lot of these processes and, and very much responsible for a lot of what we're seeing in Adelaide today. So that was my journey. If I hadn't have done ISU, it would have been very difficult for me to uh, have found a way to learn so much about space and meet so many great people as I have. So I just wanted to share that with you, and I have also asked Alex if she could also give her uh, the benefits she's found from the ISC. Thanks. Hi, Through the love heart saying his happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, I was a participant in 2014 with Michael. So I've actually got a fellow participant from my year here, which is very exciting. You don't tend to see too many 2014 people floating around. Um, yep, yeah, so I was um, at after being a participant in 2014, I then finished my degree in astrophysics. Um, was looking for something to do um, post that degree because I wasn't sure I wanted to go straight into a PhD or a master's after four years of very intense study. So I decided to become a TA. I um, uh, got in contact with uh, Leslie, who was running logistics at that time and she was very kind enough to put a recommendation forward for me to be a TA. So, was Scott's TA. Um, then 2018 was um, a few more people's TA, and then again, this year, another TA. <laughs> so, I drank the Kool-Aid uh, when it came to ISU. Um, so, I did TA twice, then went to the Netherlands last year, it was the participant liaison which was very interesting because overnight I became the chief cat herder of 150 people. So um, that was really eye-opening because I'd never worked with a team that big. And um, it was really fun because I met some amazing people. And then I came back here. Um, and this time, in addition to being the participant liaison, I was also associate chair of uh, the team project that focused on a day without space who just had their presentation, so they nailed it. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud. Um, but yeah, uh, ISU has uh, allowed me to travel across the globe. Um, I presented my uh, white paper, as they were then called, in, at the ISC in 2014 in Toronto. So I went to Canada for ISU, went to the Netherlands for ISU. Um, fingers crossed, I might get to Strasbourg this year for ISU. Um, yeah, so I've been able to travel and meet dozens of people. It's not every day when you get to um, come home and go, oh, so I just got off the phone with this astronaut, right? <laughs> I think that's not a sentence that people get to say. So um, that's one of the weird side effects of ISU is you do get to meet some really incredible people in the industry. So. Um, this was the staff in 2017, so way back when. And I had blonde hair then, so that's fun. And then we got a little bit weirder in 2018. So 
There we go again. And then things got even weirder in SSP. So this is the Space Masquerade slash Alumni Weekend. So uh, that was a, a huge amount of fun where we got everybody in to dress up, have a bit of fun. And then 2019. So ISU professionally has done a lot for me. I've met some amazing people. I've got so many opportunities at the moment. And uh, <laughs> okay, I'll skip it. <laughs> I think it's a lovely photo. Um, yeah, so ISU has done a lot for me professionally, but I've also had a huge amount of fun. Uh, and if you were thinking about um, becoming staff, these are just some of the uh, roles you can have. So teaching assistant, participant liaison, team project chair, associate chair, um, those are all um, SHSSP, you can do those roles here, but overseas in the Northern Hemisphere, you've also got all of these other different uh, roles you can do. So Scott was academic assistant, I was participant liaison, um, Gibini was uh, events, external. external relations assistant, um, oh, I didn't put it on there, sorry. Um, but there's heaps and heaps of roles, and ISU is always looking for um, hard workers. Um, and yeah, so professionally, I've I'm really excited. Uh, this year I've got a lot of opportunities, so um, hopefully going to find out whether or not I got a, I got a job tomorrow, which is very exciting. Um, if not, like I'm, there's, there's lots of different things and I've been introduced to a lot of people, so it's done a lot for me professionally and uh, it's just a boatload of fun, really. Like the staff become your friends and the participants become, the participants become your friends. and. <laughs> nice photo that you spot, sorry, I had to put it in. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, so I've had a huge amount of fun and like uh, I used to become like my family, so any questions, uh, make sure you let me know. Uh, it's, it's a huge amount of fun being stuff, but I don't regret it at all.
and um, in preparation of it to like let everybody know that something like this is happening, communication and um, outreach is a huge like a huge step to do. So um, normally, what um, ISU does it is that it communicates through newsletters and maybe it could be like a monthly thing or like a quarterly thing where you just talk about, um, for example, um, updates about alumni and the events that are there in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere and mentioning what's really happening this month, the next one, and then slowly following up saying that, oh, we have this alumni day in Australia and Adelaide for one or two days so that everyone can book their tickets and make their way to Adelaide. And um, what can we really do for the alumni day here? Because in the Northern Hemisphere, we, it's actually an alumni weekend, and uh, um, the difference would be like, there they don't get to see the TPs and get really involved with the participants, um, you know, schedule-wise, but here, we could really get them involved with the participants. Um, and I have a small video. So this one was made last year, specifically for the alumni weekend. <coughs> it's been 10 years since I graduated from SSPOA in Barcelona at the Cape. And this is our 10th year anniversary for this reason. But I ask you to get in touch with me uh, to support them uh, in external relations coordination this year. I just shared this a payback with others uh, voluntarily joined in order to support all alumni and bring you together. So hopefully in this alumni weekend we will be again getting in touch with all the community enabling international corporations for the year and close future. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, François Quiro. I'm an uh, alumni from uh, SSP 1989, a long time ago. It was the first uh, summer session in Strasbourg, France. And after having been a student at uh, SSP 89, I came back first in 91 as a TA, as a teaching assistant. And after that, I've been involved in many aspects uh, at ISU. I have been a lecturer at various summer session programs and also at the central campus uh, for the master's program. Uh, I've been um, a representative of the alumni at the board of trustees a couple of years and also president of the French Alumni Association. So a relatively rich uh, ISU life after my graduation from ISU. Uh, it's been a pleasure from the beginning to be part of the group alumni community and uh, I would all encourage everybody to be an active member of the alumni community. It's, uh, it's a great community, good networking, good people and in particular I wish a very good alumni weekend to all. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Lanehart. I was a participant in SSP 08 in Barcelona and I'm here now at SSP 18 in Delft, Netherlands as a core lecturer and as a departmental advisor for the Human Performance and Space Department. And I wanted to welcome you all and hope that you come out to the Alumni Weekend. It's our 10th anniversary of our SSP, so I hope to see a lot of SSP OA people here in the Netherlands. Dear fellow alumni, since I became an alumnus myself almost 30 years ago, I decided that I would remain associated with this university because it was the first place I saw where you could have an idea and convince other people to join you and make that idea happen, whether it was organizing an event or creating a new organization or launching a new project. So for these past 30 years I have believed that the ISU is the family where we need to belong. We wait for you in Delft. ISU alumni, it's going to be a great uh, time in the Netherlands this year in Delft. Uh, you really shouldn't miss it. It's a great time to come together. It's a great time to see what's happening. It's a great time for space. 
Yes, so that was um, about the alumni weekend and uh, SSP. Um, so overall, we have a pool of 4,600 plus alumni in the ISU network. And mainly, as you can see, if we um, just take Latin America, Oceania, Asia, and Africa, that's pretty much like the southern hemisphere. Um, so we, we complete most of the alumni of the ISG body. And um, also, yeah, so this is like a representation of the countries and how many um, we have from the alumni. And we have, a, uh, so I think we have like a big pool that with networking can be very beneficial, especially for participants of this program. So what happens at the Northern Hemisphere SSP is that we have like a day trip to all the spacey attractions in town. So last year in the Netherlands we went to Isa Este and um, a couple of observatories and um, a research facility as well. So here in Adelaide, I know that we have like Innovation Park and uh, many uh, startup companies that um, alumni would like to visit. Also, the alumni dinner and the Space Masquerade Ball um, is a huge highlight. Um, also, the president and some distinguished lecturers. Uh, also, I think the chancellor of ISU also spoke last year at SSB, so we can definitely organize something like that here. And also, we have a football game, alumni versus participants, which um, is very interesting and uh, is actually a pretty big deal. And this was last year's um, SHSSB representatives at the alumni uh, event. Um, and I heard Omar say that was the biggest um, representation of SHSSB. So, and um, last year the participants won the game. For I think five years the alumni uh, had won the game, but last year the participants won. So, yeah. Um, so the main benefits of uh, an alumni weekend for especially the alumni and the participants and all would be like a reunion just like we have here and networking opportunities because most of these alumni are already working in the space industry or already have a um, history of like 20 years of work experience in the space industry and, and that actually is a massive support for people who want to um, work in the space industry or are transitioning from another industry to the space industry and it's also a good way to give back to the community and get yourself involved in the local space community as well. So um, I hope that's a good amount of information. Um, and I'd like to invite all of you to be part of this um, committee and help Scott and Michael and me um, to do a great day for next year. So if you are interested, um, I'll should just confirm if everybody here is happy to be on the mailing list for this meeting. So I'll send out the minutes to this and then uh, feel free to share that with your colleagues or other people uh, in ISU who aren't here today. And if you're interested, please uh, reply and let me know. Um, so one... Just what Juan was saying in that video about you having your ideas and listening to being able to get people around to your side of thinking. Um, uh, another alumni, I, I'm not sure from what program he's from, his name is Magna Johansson. He's sent a video in to demonstrate what Juan was saying about the environment that ISU's network has in creating uh, senior ideas develop into businesses or initiatives otherwise. It's only a short video, I will dig it out and find it. And it's also something that you might be interested in following up. Just while you're doing that, Scott, yes. can I just ask a question? Um, does the SSP alumni weekend include a formal session of papers and presentations by alumni? They, they weren't papers. <laughs> There was a present, there was a... But not from alumni. Oh, right. It was from Nassim, like, um, from, from ISU, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I just wondered whether, I think many years ago when I attended one of these weekends, 
they actually had a, an opportunity for alumni to talk about, you know, to give papers on space-related topics. And uh, one of the benefits of that is that they might be able to get support from their employers to attend the event because they're there to learn or to network. And I just wonder whether there was any merit in thinking about that sort of activity for the, this program, um, either on, on the Thursday afternoon, like right now, or possibly on the Saturday after graduation. And if, if, if we call it a weekend, then you could add in uh, perhaps a trip to the Barossa Valley. You could, you could design a whole weekend of activities. But, uh, one of the, you know, one of the justifications for making the trip would be that you're actually participating in a professional conference. So it's just an idea. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll second that too. Like I was able to justify coming to this by talking about like the presentations and seminars and that sort of thing. So, um, so something that you can find professional development. Yeah, that's how I'm here as well, because of exactly that reason, so that's a good point. On the agenda I wanted to mention, which uh, would be good to find someone, some people to commit to today, which is the Space Talk ISU alumni newsletter. I'm not sure if anybody has read or come across that, uh, but they, we, at the end of every program, uh, there's a small report in the upcoming issue, it's a quarterly journal, uh, about what that, or how that program uh, progressed and what was learned and what the feedback was from participants, what was gained from it. And so if, is anybody willing, I know you not, may not have heard of the journal yet, um, but I encourage you to uh, read it. I'll send out the link with the minutes. And if there's one or two or three or even half a dozen of you want to get together and write a few hundred words uh, about it, that would be fantastic. So please just start thinking about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
So join us for a big opportunity to delve deep into the emerging trends of ocean space ecosystem. I look forward to seeing you all in Beijing. So that's a really good example of how the ideas and discussions that have come out of the team project can turn into uh, business opportunities, and in this case, a business opportunity that's also giving back to uh, the space industries. Uh, Matt and I have said that that event, if anybody's interested, is from the 14th to the 19th of May, though the venue's to be confirmed, it is in Beijing City. And if you're interested to get in touch with him, uh, please do either through myself uh, or a I'll ask his, him if he's happy for his contact details to be included in the email that I sent out. Um, the only other item, I really appreciate everybody coming to this because I know I've been through it, we've all been through what it's like <laughs> to go through the TP process and how you just want to put your feet up. Uh, and I really do appreciate your attention. The only one more item I, I, I wanted to um, put forward uh, before we open up for discussion or other comments was just having really taking it seriously and having a presence at space events. Uh, of course nationally but also internationally. It's, it's really important to uh, be proud of having, having come through this program. And I just say that because there are a couple of events coming up. There's of course the other one air show which preceding that is the Australian Space Industry Conference which is the first one. and. Uh, that, that's a little bit short notice, it's next Monday on the 25th, but that, the, the Minister is speaking there, representatives of the agency, and that's not the only one that will have those kinds of speakers at it, but they're the types of things that uh, are really good to get involved in. And without sounding like I'm plugging anything, the Space Industry Association of Australia, uh, which perhaps Michael might talk a bit about, is a very good opportunity to, be, to not only uh, be aware of what's happening through their updates, but also actually be actively involved in advocacy towards the government, really play a part in how uh, the industry and, and all space industries in Australia are, are shaping. Um, because I hope we can appreciate right now is a very, not so volatile, but a very nascent time in terms of uh, what uh, regulations and what policies uh, can benefit separate industries. So please check out that. Uh, I was hoping that the president of the AYAA would be here, which is the, can you help me with this? The Australian uh, Youth Aerospace Association. Association. Yes, because I, the reason I asked them to come here, one, they're an alumni, but I actually don't know enough about it myself, I have to admit. So, does anybody here know a bit about it yet? Yeah. Oh, please, yeah, yes. Yeah, do we come down and say some Yeah, please, that would be fantastic. I forgot what I want to mention. Hi everyone, um, so I definitely haven't paid anything to this, but I'll say what I think is important on the top of my head. Um, so hi, I'm representing um, the Australian Youth Aerospace Association. Um, so this year I'm on the National uh, Senior Leadership Team, there's five of us up, five of us up there. Um, I think two, from the top of my head, uh, there's two of us that are alumni or including myself and the current president, Connor McDonald, who did um, this program. Oh, what's your name, sorry? Connor McDonald. What's your name, sorry? Oh, Tien. Yeah. Um, I think Connor did it back in 2016. Um, yeah, and I think if you, you were know, looking through all the, the printouts of the reports throughout, like when we were developing our own, um, you see a, quite a few um, uh, familiar names that are, like that have completed the SHSSP um, and now working in like the aerospace slash space industry um, across Australia. Um, yeah, so it's really cool to see like the, there's a lot of cross contamination between ISU and AYAA if you like to call or AYA, depending on what you prefer. Um, so the goal generally with um, Australian Youth Aerospace Association is to make um, connections between students or undergrads um, and give them connections to the industry that they aspire to work in. Um, and so we do that through various, uh, mainly events. So we host, or we, we run these major events throughout the year. Um, our main flagship event is called um, 
Aerospace Futures. It's a big three-day conference for um, undergrads that have an interest in aerospace, um, aerospace field. Um, yeah, and that rotates between different cities. So in 2017, it was in Adelaide. Last year, it was in Canberra. Um, this year, it will be in Sydney. Um, and yeah, so well, a lot of the major sponsors um, come along and have the opportunity to do like a keynote presentation, um, show off what their company's been working on, and then have the opportunity to talk directly, um, interact directly to the um, to like enthusiastic undergrads that will be graduating soon, looking for um, looking for work. Um, we have other events as well. So we have one targeted for a, a younger audience. It's uh, for high school students. So the the week before um, Aerospace Futures is hosted, we have um, Australian Youth Aerospace Forum, um, which is like aerospace camp for um, students all across high school students, so year 11, year 12 students, all across Australia. Um, that's always hosted in Brisbane, because they have a lot of strong connections there with the aerospace industry. Um, and then for the first time ever, in this April, we're doing um, running the Australian University Rocket Competition. We have a lot of all-out acronyms. Um, so that's the AURC, and so that's, I think, last I checked, it's around 17 teams across all of Australia competing to, to launch rockets. Um, so for the people that launched rockets in the SHSSP, we launched our students are about um, 500 meters was the, the highest ones. These ones here would launch okay different units. Um, the two classes of our students were launched to is um, 10,000 feet and 30,000 feet. So that that 30,000 feet is just around nine kilometers. Um, so that's a very long process to be prepared for that. The main issue we've had is like make sure the teams are, get the certification because um, anything above, well 10,000 feet is like you need to get a level 3 certification for that so they need to pass first level 1, level 2 and then level 3 in order to actually just shop at the competition. Um, so that's in late April this year. Um, uh, it's like in the middle of nowhere, like high power rocket launches, um, around about a 5 hour drive away from Brisbane inland. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think another event we have which is directly space related is Undergraduate Space Week. Um, that's been run once before, and that was kind of my big breakthrough in terms of um, opening my eyes to the space industry. And like, um, that's where I first informed, got informed about Space 2.0 and the emerging space industry, especially in Australia. Um, that was in November 2017, and we're running another one in September this year as well. Um, and I think, especially one of my goals with um, being involved with AYAA is the multidisciplinary aspect. So a lot of the um, a lot of the delegates that come to the events have engineering backgrounds, but um, I always like get really uh, enthusiastic. Well, like it's always a pleasant surprise when there's someone that comes with a law background medical background um, and then have an, have an interest in space. So I always find that, um, yeah, always makes me really happy when, when you see like that diversity in the crowd as well. Um, I think that's all I have to say, just mainly events. Um, there are smaller events that happen throughout the year in respective, um, in respective states. But yeah, that's it for me. Any questions? Can you off the top of your head when the Aris Futures event is? Um, it's always in the July break. That's kind of as much as I know about it. Uh, Michael? I just wanted to say I went to Aerospace Futures last year, and that's what got me into this. Yeah. Yeah, so that's right. And that's why I heard about this program as well. So at Aerospace Futures last year in Canberra, um, one of the alumni from the previous year, Jack Hooper, uh, did a quick presentation showing off SHSSP. And so that that put um, this program in front of a lot of eyes as well. So, yeah, it's a good collaboration between the two associations. Any other further questions? No? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, everyone.